This content creator was left with third degree burns after a prank video went wrong, and to make it even worse, the person who's responsible for that has ghosted her. What the hell? I absolutely despise prank videos. I'm sure that's not going to come as a surprise to any of you. Well, any of you that know me well enough and have watched enough of my videos. I hate them. I hate them for multiple reasons, not just because they're cringe, although that is a big part of it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being cringe, but it, it will make me dislike the content. And yes, somebody is going to say in the comments, but Vangelina, you're cringe. That's okay. I don't like myself either. <laughs> Look, there are a lot of reasons that I hate them, a lot of legitimate reasons that I cannot stand this kind of content, and I will get into it later in the video after I tell you more about the situation, because that's what you want to hear. But I want to just preface it by saying one of the main reasons that I hate them is because people are constantly getting hurt in these things. They're constantly getting hurt, they're constantly getting emotionally scarred, all of these things. I mean, remember J Station? Do you remember J Station? Maybe not. Tell me if you want me to revisit that. It was actually one of my first uh, commentary videos ever. This was back when I was doing gaming. Good time of day. Uh, today's video is about a YouTuber I didn't know about until like two days ago because I watched a Tom Harlock video about him. Uh, if you haven't heard, there is a man named J Station. Not his real name, just his YouTube name. Actually, from what I'm seeing here, his YouTube name is I'm J Station, without the apostrophe. There's just a long history of prank videos going terribly wrong and people getting hurt or emotionally scarred or whatever it is, and yet it still continues and people still watch it, and that is because their demographic is children who don't know any better, but again, D different topic, we'll get to that later. Let's firstly talk about the poor woman who now has serious physical injuries because of a prank video. Like, does that seem worth it to you? No. And it wasn't even her own channel that this happened on, it was on somebody else's channel. I do have to say really importantly before I say anything else, that everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged. It is based on speculation and opinion and the words of people online. And before anybody gets mad at me, I have to say that I uh, need to be responsible for not spreading things as fact that have not been proven in a court of law. If I don't do that, I can get sued, so don't argue with me. Everything is alleged. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get on to the actual story. So this woman, Sabrina Mercado, she showed up on my For You page with this post where she said, YouTuber told me his prank would be safe. He gave me third degree burns and hypertrophic scars, said he'd pay my medical bills and is now ghosting me. How horrific is that? According to Stanford Medicine, third degree burns are full thickness burns. They destroy the epidermis and dermis. Third degree burns may also damage the underlying bones, muscle and tendons. The burn site appears white and charred. There is no sensation in the area since the nerve endings are destroyed. So it's an extremely serious kind of burn. It's not just like touching a candle and ow, that hurts. And hypertrophic scars are a thick raised scar that's an abnormal response to wound healing, according to Cleveland Clinic. So serious stuff, not life ending, but can be in some situations lifelong. Now I pretty quickly from going through her TikTok and the comments and stuff found out who she was talking about, who this YouTuber was, but it took me a while to find the actual prank that caused this and I was very confused by the whole thing. I eventually did find it, you're welcome, and we will discuss. First, discuss, not disgust. We will, I guess we'll be disgusted too by the actions of YouTubers, as, as is usual actually on this channel, but no, we will discuss. Firstly, there is something that I wanted to talk to you guys about really quickly, just bear with me. We're gonna get to the rest of the stuff, I swear to God, I will say this as quickly as I can. You can put me on two times speed if you want. So, I um, put up a little poll on my community tab because a lot of you will know that I have been working on a book and I had been debating with myself for ages whether I wanted to try and traditionally publish it as in send it to a publishing house and get them to publish it for me or if I just wanted to self-publish. Self-publishing though is expensive and I know this confused some people when I said it. I don't mean the act of putting your book online and hitting publish is expensive, that's obviously free, but the actual work to get 
a book ready to publish it is not <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that goes into it it can cost thousands upon tens of thousands uh, it takes a lot of time and energy and resources um, but I came to the decision that I wanted to self-publish because publishing traditionally is quite a disappointing endeavor and you give over full control of your book to the publisher to then you know do a good job with it or change everything and then not even market it properly and not really do anything with it and there's all your hard work gone so I wanted to self-publish and I put up a poll asking people if they would in any way be interested in supporting a Kickstarter for me to do that so that I could get the book out to the best of my ability to have it be the best that it could possibly be for you without compromising anything without getting rid of the LGBT characters. To my utter surprise, a lot of you actually did say you would be interested. Um, so I'm launching a Kickstarter. <laughs> and I just want to um, explain to people what that actually means. I know for some of you, you know how a Kickstarter works, but not everybody does. So I want to explain it again. You can put me on two times speed. You can skip ahead if you want to, if you're not interested in this, but I would really love if you would hear me out. With the Kickstarter, there is a detailing of what my book is about, certain things that are in the book without giving too much away, obviously, because I don't want to spoil the whole book. That link is in the description. You can check it out. You can read what the book is about and see if it's something you'd be interested in. It's a book that I have been conceptualizing and writing for a very long time, actually years at this point, and bothering every single person in my life that I care about about it, and I think they're sick of me talking about it. It is a book about Mero, which I have just been calling mermaids because more people are aware of mermaids. Mero are basically Irish mermaids, but I've kind of put my own spin in it. So in my book, they are shapeshifters. This is a dark fantasy sort of book. Uh, there's multiple POVs, morally gray characters, betrayal and religious elements and sea monsters. And I won't go on about that too much because you can read more about what's actually going to be in the book in the Kickstarter itself on that page. It's the first book in a series. I'm really, really excited about it. Just to let you know that the cover art that I have used in the Kickstarter is not the final cover. It's a horrible cover. I have no graphic design skills. That's a placeholder. I just can't afford a cover artist right now. <laughs> You see the issue? If you're interested in supporting this and supporting me and helping me make this actually be the best I can and be able to self-publish it and get it out into the world, then you can consider donating to the Kickstarter. You can support it with any amount of money that you want, but there are certain tiers with rewards that you can get. And I want to be very clear that the rewards that you are getting, that's not the price that you're paying to get that reward. You're donating the money to the Kickstarter and as a thank you, you're also getting a reward for that. For the first 24 hours of the Kickstarter, there are two early bird rewards. After the 24 hours, a paperback copy of the book, once it's released, is going to be on the $38 reward. For the first 24 hours, it is on the $20 reward. If you want a signed paperback, that's gonna be on the $59 reward after the first 24 hours, but during the first 24 hours, it's only on the $35 one. Thank you so much if you choose to support this. If you can't support it, but you would like to, I would still appreciate if you just share it around with people who you think might be interested. And I also wanna say one thing really quickly, just to make it really clear that uh, my goal is not going to cover all of the potential expenses for the book. There are gonna be a lot more, but Kickstarter has an all or nothing policy, so if you don't reach the goal, all the money, you don't get any of it, it's all refunded, which is fair enough, but it just means I wanted to make a goal that was reasonable, but if we exceed the goal, I'm not going to be mad, it will just help me pay for more of the stuff. So thank you, I'm going to move on, sorry for talking so much. I just love to yap. Back to Sabrina Mercado. The person that it's alleged was responsible for these burns and this prank was a creator called Topper Guild, who I keep trying to call Topher, but that is not his name. Oh, oh no! I can't believe my best friend is dead! That's right, someone has murdered me and the killer is somebody in this room. He's your typical prank channel type thing, very aimed at kids, very copy and paste from other creators, ridiculous stuff, clearly scripted. Nothing out of the ordinary for a prank channel. But the prank that actually occurred here was that for some reason, what for whatever reason, this is an interesting prank to people, um, 
He poured concrete on her legs. He poured concrete on her legs. Now, obviously, she knew about this. This was all scripted and planned. It's not like he just suddenly poured concrete on her legs. Prank videos, I hate to break it to you if you didn't know this. Actually, I'd love to break it to you if you didn't know this because how do you not know this in the year of our Lord 2024? Prank videos are all fake. So she knew it was going to happen and obviously people are going to say well then she shouldn't have done it she shouldn't have agreed to it but what you need to understand here is that according to her he guaranteed her that this was safe ensured her that this was safe to do to pour concrete on her legs which clearly it is not concrete is corrosive and also why why would you think that that's a good idea and as a result of this prank she ended up in the hospital with third degree burns and there was a long healing process and she's kind of you know dealing with the mental aspects of it and stuff as well but what i need to say here is that if you are a prank channel as much as i hate you you know you have the right to be here but at the same time it is the minimum bare requirement that if you are doing these kind of prank videos whether everybody is consenting or not actually no everybody should be consenting don't like don't do this stuff without somebody consenting you need to check whether the stuff you're doing is safe. You need to do proper investigation into that. You don't need to just be like, well, like my brother's cousin's dog said that it was fine, so it's probably fine. No, you need to actually research whether the stuff that you're doing is safe before ensuring and promising people that the stuff you're doing is safe. Because probably she had some concerns about concrete being poured on her. I mean, I feel like all of us would have concerns about that. That sounds terrifying. Maybe not Poppy. Maybe that was too niche of a joke. Sorry. But it is your duty, if you are doing these kind of videos, to make sure that it's safe. And it was clearly not, because she ended up in the hospital. And it was fucking concrete. You poured fucking concrete on the girl. How do you th How do you- Try- I'm not suggesting he tried on himself, but maybe he should have considered trying it on himself first. Just see what happens. May maybe you should test all your pranks on yourself just to see if they're safe, if you're so sure. Now that video has been almost scrubbed. It's very hard to find, but according to her, he said he would pay her medical bills because obviously in a lot of the world's medical bills are really, really freakishly high. Like so much so that it kind of makes me want to vomit when I think about it, like America, what the hell? What the hell? Do you just want people to die there? Sorry, what energy am I coming with today? I think the prank channels just made me annoyed. Anyway, he apparently has ghosted her. According to her anyway, like I said, everything's alleged, but he apparently has ghosted her now that she's actually asking for the medical bills, which is just slimy. It's disgusting. And people in the comments of her videos are saying, like, if you did not sign some kind of waiver, you absolutely should sue him. And I agree. I agree for negligence or something or other. Again, not a lawyer, don't know what the actual thing would be, but I'm almost sure you could sue for something like that if you didn't sign a waiver. Or maybe even if you did, if there's some kind of ways around it, if you were lied to or something like that. But see what I mean? Prank channels just, they go wrong. Everything's terrible. Why, why do they exist? I'll tell you why they exist. Because kids, kids just eat it up. It's the way the content is filmed and the colors and the expressions and they haven't developed enough yet to learn what's fake and what's real, especially on YouTube. And that's the only way that these creators survive. But then what happens is kids see that stuff and think it's real and think it's funny and may then go and try that stuff with their friends. Now, I'm not under the impression that every child has access to concrete. I don't think that's the case, but other stuff, other smaller stuff that may go wrong. A kid might see that on a prank channel and be like, haha, funny, that didn't go wrong in their video, so I'm gonna do it to my friend. And then, like, I don't know, another friend has lost an eye or something. I know I'm being extreme, but we read stories like this all the time, and I just think these channels are disgusting. I think if you're going to do stuff like this, the very least that you can do is make sure that it's safe so that you don't pour concrete on somebody's legs and give them burns so you don't be so much of an absolute idiot just just an idiot i feel really really bad for her like that's just horrific and i can't imagine how scary that must have been because if you're in concrete you're stuck and to feel yourself being burned but unable to move away from that that must have been horrifying so not only has it scarred her body she's probably got some kind of trauma or traumatic responses from this 
I, I could imagine that would give you lifelong anxiety of some kind. Maybe not necessarily anxiety, but fears, something. I know for me that would freak me out forever, but I'm also somebody who just hates pranks and everybody I know, I've told them if you ever prank me, that will be the last that you hear from me. So just, just so you know, it's called setting boundaries, okay? It's important, important to do that. But yeah, this is just gross. I feel really, really bad for her. This guy, if he is actually ghosting her after this happened in his video, then he's scum and he needs to be called out for it because people can't get away with stuff like this and think that they can just get off scot-free when they've caused someone actual harm with a stupid YouTube video. Your YouTube videos are stupid anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being mean. Actually, I'm not sorry for being mean to this person. He poured concrete on somebody's legs. Why am I apologizing? He should apologize, not me. Anyway, that's it for now. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Am I being too harsh? Probably not. I, I just said I don't think I'm being too harsh. He poured concrete on somebody. But let me know what you think. And if you don't want to comment about that, then let me know what kind of books you like to read. Because obviously, Kickstarter, if you forgot, that's in the description. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, no, I'm not done. <laughs> Subscribe to me, notifications, social media, Patreon. Goodbye.